Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we are going to uh, talk about uh, a lighter Joomla for the third world. And uh, well, I hope it's going to be an exciting uh, travel uh, to, uh, through the third world. I know, I know maybe some of you know some things we have to live. I'm, well, I'm Tito Alvarez. I'm from Guatemala. And that's why I'm talking about this. Uh, basically, about understanding what's happening there and what uh, challenges we have uh, both as, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> both uh, in terms of community and also in terms of, uh, of Joomla as a tool uh, for uh, entering into the third world and entering into the, well, underdeveloped countries, which is, uh, which is actually a whole challenge in terms of many things that we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in, in the middle of the presentation. I'll be more than uh, happy to, to, to attend. Okay, I'll talk a, a bit about me first, uh, so you get to understand why I'm doing this. Uh, first of all, I live in Guatemala City. I've, li I've lived there my whole life. I was born there, and well, I'm there. I have used Joomla since 2007. I've been doing uh, a web uh, coding since about uh, 2000, something like that. Uh, but I've been I, I knew Joomla for a friend from a friend uh, since about uh, 2007, and I started doing websites since then. And uh, it, it it was like kind of cool because uh, uh, well, if, uh, as much of us. Uh, uh, many of us have done. Uh, I started doing uh, some HTML files and some CSS and trying to see what happened. And then uh, knowing a tool like Joomla was like seeing the light, right? It's, it's like illuminating. We, we, we've much, 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 many of us have gone through that. And uh, well, um, uh, I joined uh, the Joomla user group in Guatemala City since 2010. Since, uh, 2010. So it's. Uh, Actually, it, it was one of the greatest things or the greatest decisions I've ever made uh, to join a community. I don't know if, if you all uh, are, uh, are into a Joomla community right now, and if, if you're not, I, I really encourage you to, to join a, a local community. It's great. Uh, you get to know many uh, interesting people and, well, share, which is essentially the basic of the community. Because it's all about the community. I mean. It's uh, it's all about uh, sharing good uh, times and sharing some beer too, of course. <laughs> Th this picture was taken uh, in the Joomla de Guatemala, which was uh, which was on uh, this year by February and March. Uh, the one taking the picture over there is Javi Gomez, which you can see there in the <laughs> in the corridor, and there's my. Uh, yeah, that's that's Javi. That's Javi Gomez. He's taking the picture to the photographer. <laughs> And there's also Willing, my, my good friend Willing from Chile. Uh, these guys went to, to Guatemala this year and we shared some good time and we celebrated Willing's birthday, which was uh, like two months earlier <laughs> than that. <laughs> but we didn't care about it because it's sharing. It's, I mean, it's about having some good time and enjoying what you do. That's the basic of the community. So I really encourage you to uh, to join a local community if you're not on one already. So, uh, first of all, what is the third world? And we'll, we'll see some myths, some realities of the, th of the things that really happen in the third world and, and for, for all of us that, that live in, in some, some country in the, in the third world. Um, and I'm, I'm going to make some, may maybe some, some, some quiz in here. First of all, first of all, have you had have you had some encounter of the third kind? I mean, <laughs> have you been uh, have you been to a th uh, third world country? <laughs> okay, no, only only the third kind. I mean, in the third world, have have, have you guys uh, traveled to to a third world countries? Yeah. yeah well, do you live there? Yeah. No, do you live in Brazil? Brazil is not a third world exactly. Uh, just in some things. Okay, no. If if you get to Guatemala, then, then you will see it's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there there are all kinds of countries because uh, there are some underdeveloped countries and there are under underdeveloped countries and all that all that kind of stuff. I mean, 
uh, we enjoy what, what we do uh, and we enjoy having our things, but when, but when we see and we travel to another reality, for example, when I come here, I see we we'll live very different from this. I mean, this is some other kind of stuff we don't see every day, right? <laughs> okay. So, some myth. Do we live in jungles? Is, I mean, are we just like caving things in? Uh, I mean, there, there are people who live there, uh, lots of people who live like that, and, uh, and they live in very poor conditions, of course. Uh, I mean, that's part of our reality. Of course, I, you, you don't see me. You don't see me dressed like that right now, <laughs> because guess what? We got cities too, and we got very big cities and big, very big metropolis also. also uh, for example, my city, Guatemala City, uh, about uh, three million people live there, and it's a very big city. Uh, I mean, I'm not, not like this city, of course, but it's uh, actually a very big metropolis, and there we have all the things that we got in, in, in the first world as a city, all the challenges and all the things that you got here too. And we got technology, of course. <laughs> uh, I mean, sometimes it's not exactly what you expect of the technology, but of course, be because maybe uh, you'll see the technology here and you see that everything is like very lined up and very strict uh, as it should be. Well, in in our, in our countries, it's maybe not like that. I mean, we get uh, to have the things that we need, and sometimes we don't have all the tools that we need. But but we find our way out. Our, our way out. The, the right there, it's, it says internet, uh, technology, sales, and computing, something like that. Technology sales. I mean, it's like some kind of a store over there. Okay, Tamar, is it true that we carry chickens in the buses? <laughs> Yes, it is. There are a lot of chicken buses, <laughs> and that's uh, and th that's that's a true. I mean, if if you go if you travel from the city uh, to some town to uh, to some uh, um, population all, all over the country, you'll get to go to into some of these chicken buses, and you will travel with chickens and some parks and stuff like that. So yes, <laughs> most of the people are uh, farmers, and uh, I mean. It's like that. Uh, even 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 in part in the city. Hmm? Busetas? Uh, we call them camionetas. Maybe it's, it, it may be similar. Okay, for us it's camionetas. Almost the same. Busetas, camionetas. <laughs> Almost the same. <laughs> okay, yeah, just uh, ways of uh, speaking. And that's you, you <laughs> that that's something uh, uh, really funny, especially in Latin America. Because, uh, well, as you got it in this, uh, here in the U.S., uh, we in Latin America we all speak Spanish, but except from from Brazil, uh, well, but we all got our, our accents, of course. I mean, every country got uh, got its accent, and even in the countries there are local accents. And it's very funny when you get to a meeting where when there are people of uh, many countries of Latin America, because they're they're all saying like, oh. The, 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 the accent of yours, it's funny. <laughs> and yeah, every, every accent is funny. Because <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what happens. Because, because uh, well, you got to hear also, I mean, not everyone talks the way, uh, not everyone talks the same. Okay, do we have catastrophes, hurricanes, earthquakes all the time? Well, as, as also happens here, we got a lot of catastrophes. We got a lot, of, a lot of hurricanes, flooding, etc. Actually, this is uh, flooding uh, in in my country. Uh, it's uh, actually it's a flooding, and that's that's a lake over there. So the fl the lake flooded into the uh, into one of the towns uh, uh, right near the con uh, right near the the lake. Uh, actually, we recently have an er had an earthquake uh, this uh, past uh, week in uh, in my country, and it's uh, kind of uh, hard as it is in everywhere. Uh, but we try to keep up with things, of course. But there's also its good part. That's a picture of the same lake taken from a good side, and when no nothing is flooded, it's a very precious lake, uh, Lake Atlan, and I hope. You get to go there sometime. It's 
very, it's very, a very good place, actually. Do we dance Gangnam style? <laughs> yeah, the the guy there with the with the style. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All of that goes into our country as well as as you guys get all the modern things and all the tendencies we do that and we also get the miércoles de cumbia which is uh, that's uh, li literally Wednesday of cumbia cumbia is a popular rhythm in Latin America uh, as actually most from Colombia and Mexico okay some of you may have may have heard of cumbia and it, it's very funny in my country the, the there's this organization from the miércoles de cumbia uh, which uh, every first Wednesday of the of the of, of the month, uh, they get to some place and just to dance and hear some cumbia. It's like a very big movement that has been organized through the social network. I mean, it's very kind of funny. So, getting to the point, what's up with the third world and the internet? Why why is this so important? Why am I showing you all this? Because it's all about the infrastructure. I mean, we don't have uh, maybe, uh, or we, our people is good enough for making things, but we don't have so, uh, many, many times the infrastructure we need for having uh, the right connections we need for the internet and for, for other things. And we usually tend to be a bit behind uh, on, on some, of, on much of the things that happen in the internet. I mean, it's about uh, the limitations when you don't have the appropriate installations, and that's uh, something lame. I mean, when you get to a place like this and you see that everything is connected where it should be, and that, that the cables are well, uh, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, like well set up, uh, another thing, and all this thing, is, it's like, wow, it's, I hope this, will, this was like, like this in my, in my country. <laughs> I mean, it's not, usually it's not, I mean, you go to some place and you get to see the cables over there and like this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, may maybe not everywhere, but most of it, it, it usually it usually is because we mostly don't have the resources and or we, we 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 well most of people don't have the resources for setting up everything correctly, and that's what happens when you can keep up with the state of art. It's something similar to what happens in the road. That's a picture actually I took. Uh, about uh, three or four months ago, when I was traveling from Guatemala to San Salvador, which is the capital of El Salvador. Uh, and that's mostly what happens in, in our roads. I mean, uh, if, if, if we want to travel there, um, it's uh, 2,020 kilometers. That's about, um, what, uh, 150 miles, maybe. Uh, we get to make about four or five hours, because all the, all the road is just one, uh, uh, one lane to, to to each direction. I mean, and I, I and I've I, I've I've gone from LA to Las Vegas in the same time, which is almost double, right? So it's it's like a very similar thing what happens. We don't have the right infrastructure for supporting our networks, and we don't have the the right infrastructure for supporting the traffic also. <laughs> I mean. And as I, as I was talking, it's just a, it's just a, a like uh, like we're sometimes uh, we're well most of the time we're a bit behind in in terms of, of infrastructure. For example, I I, wa I wanted to tell you a brief story of my point of view from for, for the internet. I mean, how how has been internet development uh, developed in Guatemala? I remember uh, about uh, well, I know first of all people who have been into internet since about 1994, 1995, which are, which are like uh, very, very few people who have had internet since then in Guatemala. Uh, well, they, they tell me they, they got even emails, but they didn't have anyone to email <laughs> to. So it's like, <laughs> why? But uh, maybe uh, in Guatemala, in, well, from, from what I've seen, at least uh, internet became uh, popular since 1997, 1998. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure much, much of you knew internet much uh, before than that. Uh, but then it, become, it became popular there because it came some, uh, uh, some big provider that was uh, trying to connect everyone with their modems and with those uh, 56 uh, uh, kilobytes per second connection and those, those big broadband, mm -hmm. 
so uh, that that's that's how I, how how it all all started. Uh, since since then, uh, I remember, and I, I, I'm sure you you all remember since that uh, since all those times that uh, the browsers started requiring JavaScript and all the stuff and trying to do some stuff, and maybe a few years later. Uh, they all started doing some flash and some uh, bigger stuff that require more connections and more uh, or more speed, and it was kind of lame because uh, you loaded big pages and you you couldn't even get to see anything. I mean, I mean, I remember in 2000, may maybe 2000, 2001, when flash became popular in Guatemala, it was like loading, loading, loading all the time. <laughs> I mean. It was like that all the time, and especially if if you got to see some web page from anywhere else or from Guatemala, because in Guatemala we tried to took this took those pages down. I remember I got my first broadband access back to 2005. It was uh, 256 kilobytes per second connection. That was my broadband in 2005 and I was paying by then $49 a month for that I mean 2005 is seven years ago it's not too much <laughs> and it was kind of well I know for you it, it's a lot uh, I remember uh, since uh, about uh, 2003 maybe uh, a ASDL connections uh, which are the which were the big connections by then uh, became popular in Guatemala so you got you got to have uh, 128 uh, kilobytes per second uh, for 72 dollars by then. It was very very expensive. Um, and and actually this year, the, uh, right about uh, three or four months ago, I decided to upgrade my connection. I mean I've been upgrading upgrading it. I had uh, two megabytes like for about uh, the la the last two years. And this year I decided to to buy uh, a cable modem for uh, for uh, 10 megabytes per second and it's costing me about uh, over a hundred a uh, hundred yeah hundred dollars a month yeah it's uh, very it's very expensive no <laughs> I, I I told you I told you it's not expensive so so imagine that not all people have the resources for for getting all that I mean we have less resources than than develop, developed countries and and we have to pay more for that. I mean, then you don't have really big connections over over the third world. Maybe uh, some average could be between uh, uh, 500 kilobytes per second and uh, one megabyte. May maybe maybe that's that's the reality for from our our country right now. No, it's okay. I had a friend of mine who worked at the CDC, mm -hmm. and he was literally on a Skype, trying to do Skype video. Literally, just there was one uh, Wi-Fi network in the area, and the power cord was like you know, kind of a wall. So he actually went to the Skype, the, the Wi-Fi signal. And he was I've been there. Yeah, that, that's that's the same. I mean, we're we're very behind uh, the state of the art uh, infrastructure. I mean, you have very very broadband here and all that stuff, and very big connections, 30 megabytes per second, stuff like that. And well, we are still like what five six years ago what you had from what you had. So it's uh, it goes something like that. It goes something like that. And it's uh, it's the reality of, of our countries. Of course, I I don't have the luxury of being in a low connection, so I want, so that's why I'm paying for for a big one. But that's my case, and I'm maybe one in into a lot. I mean, there there are, there are not many people that uh, that live from the internet to to have to pay for that. That's why I do it, of course. Okay, but let's see some numbers and some some realities. And uh, these uh, numbers were taken from uh, net, netindex.com. Uh, these are the 
averages, uh, the approximate averages from the developed, developed countries. Uh, for example, Hong Kong is about 41 megabytes per second, Japan 36. Uh, here in the US, it says uh, 15. I'm sure um, most peop m m more people have much, m much more than that. And Oh, really? Yeah, there are very few areas in the country that have really like quiet. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, of, okay. Yeah, That's an hour rush, actually. Yeah, a lot of countries are like that. Those are areas like the middle of Kansas that we have like very few negative. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. The, uh, and and it, and it even is uh, very, I mean, for us, it's like, wow, 15. I mean, I, I got to 10 right now. And when I tell my friends, it's like, oh, you got 10. It's like, the world for, for all the geeks. <laughs> I mean, we, we all wanted to have 10 megabytes per second in our homes. And where's Latin America right now? I mean, if you, if you get to see, none of us is over 10 megabytes per second. Even the most developed ones, uh, as Mexico or Brazil, who got about six. Uh, Chile is, the, in, this, uh, in this table, the, the best one, almost nine megabytes per second. Uh, it says we are here in two. Mm, I really don't think so, and <laughs> I can tell you why. Uh, this was taken from Next Index, and Next Index is based on uh, speedtest.net, and most of the geek guys uh, use that. Yeah. It's a horrible test. Okay. It's caffeine, it, it, it's like, it gets a favored caffeine. It's like uh, okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Unlimited? Uh, no, 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 we don't. I mean, no, well, no, we don't. Actually, we get to pay uh, for some for some bandwidth. For example, that uh, that's why I pay for for 10 megabytes per second. Uh, oh, the oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're unlimited. You're right. You're right. Actually, uh, since about uh, two years ago, when uh, 3G started to 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 come to to Guatemala, uh, ma many people start buying uh, USBs with, uh, with with internet with internet access, so they get the, their connection limited to one gigabyte or two gigabytes, something like that. I mean, and there are a lot of uh, homes that got that. That's true. And uh, for example, uh, my uh, my phone. It's in a, in a monthly contract, and I got uh, one gigabyte here, uh, supposedly at something at about uh, three megabytes per second, supposedly. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> oh, well, it's 3G. Three megabits per second, not three Four. megabytes. Yeah, it's megabits per second, not you're right. My bad. My bad. Okay. So let's see. And what about the prices which we were talking about? This is this is about uh, from from the same source. Uh, what you guys are paying uh, on the developed countries? Uh, right here in the U.S., it's uh, four forty-five uh, dollars per megabyte. Megabit. Sorry. Um, and you can see in some other countries even even less than that. If I go to Latin America again, uh, our realities are a bit different. I mean, uh, they are almost all of them uh, above ten dollars, and actually, that's what I'm currently paying for my uh, broadband, and that's that's a reality. <laughs> that's a reality. Thirteen dollars or so for my for my current uh, bandwidth, four megabytes per megabyte. So uh, that's how we're how we're doing, and that's why it's very difficult. So and well, wh why are the, the hi why the higher prices? Of course, we were talking about the infrastructure. We don't have the infrastructure for that. We don't have uh, the amount of people connecting to the internet. So as we got ma uh, less people, well, prices are higher, and we got some very good monopolies that take good care that the prices stay there. So it's like our reality. Okay. What about 3G? And that's, that's was something I was talking about because uh, in uh, about uh, two or three years ago, uh, the smartphones became popular in, 
in, in our countries. I mean, you can see in the city lots of Blackberries now, which are the, the latest the smartphones over there. Some, some of us get to have iPhones, but uh, it, it was, it was <laughs> well, for me at least, it was very uh, um, uh, funny. Uh, because I remember in the U.S., BlackBerry boom was, well, maybe in 2005, 2006, everyone was with their BlackBerry and connecting and texting. And that happened in Guatemala in 2010, five years or four or five years after that. So, so we started uh, using smartphones, having internet in, in our phones and all that. Oh, really? Ah, oh, good for you. <laughs> I don't like black blackberries. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, pre I prefer these guys or Androids or, or all that stuff. And so right now we got some basic Android phones. Uh, we got all those limitations. Uh, limitations I talked about. Uh, for example, as I talked of, on my contract, I got this uh, uh, supposedly broadband of three me megabits per second, something like that. But if I get uh, more than uh, my gigabyte uh, monthly, then it goes down to 64 uh, kilobytes per second, and, and they really do it. And I mean, you can't load a page with that speed right now. You cannot. <laughs> it's impossible. So I I, I start I stop using the phone if I get that, just for making calls, which is which is <laughs> why phones exist actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay, wh why all this, and why 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 I thought this. Uh, uh, all this was important because uh, we, we want to make business and we all want to make some good business and what about making businesses with the world okay our countries first of all are really potential for business I mean we get to have uh, we, we get uh, resources for 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 making business for example uh, Netflix started operations in Latin America last year uh, yeah we got Netflix now and we got our popular shows translated into Spanish which I hate because I prefer to hear them in English, but that's me. <laughs> not, not too many like that. Uh, and maybe not, not everyone has HD, but they get to see their shows and they get to see their, uh, their, their, their movies, so all that. I mean, I think if uh, companies in, in US and Europe and developed countries started to see uh, some potential markets in the third world, they will get to see that there's a lot, a lot of more of market over there. I mean, there are a lot of potential customers over there, which maybe don't have the exact resources to what they uh, they have right now, but they can do things, and we can do things, of course. And of course, what we lack in resources, we have in, <laughs> in creativity. I mean, we are creative guys. We're very creative. We. <laughs> that's a joke of course <laughs> but but what is true what is really true is that with the few we got uh, we get to make a lot of things and there's a lot of creativity and there's a lot of talent in in our countries and I'm I'm witness of all that I mean I, I'm I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure and and I know a lot of very talented people over there and may um, most of the times maybe they don't have the resources for example, right now in our team in Joomla Shack, uh, well, we, wor we work with Marcos, and he's a very talented guy, a very talented guy, and he's actually uh, doing most of the templates of uh, of Joomla Shack with uh, with me, and and the guy he's uh, right now 18 years old, and and he's a genius. <laughs> I mean, he is a genius, and maybe he he doesn't have the resources, and uh, he has an internet connection. I think of one or two megab megabits per second. And with that, he does very interesting things. I mean, we have very, very talented people. There's a lot, a lot of there. So we don't need only charity. We think in third world and we think in, oh, we have to do some charity over there. No, 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 we don't only need charity. Of course, we, we need some. <laughs> but not only that, we are serious, hardworking people. I, I'm sure you know uh, very, talented people from our countries and as everyone else what we need really is opportunities and we need to have those opportunities and trust especially trust of course charities are always wel welcome <laughs> okay I think I won't make that much less than that but it's okay 
Okay, so what are the what are the challenges for Joomla towards the third world? And that's that's I know wh why you're here. First of all, language. Uh, we don't speak this, the same language, of course. We don't. Well, in my case, I speak Spanish, Portuguese, etc., 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 etc. And uh, I don't know if, if, for example, if you have to, uh, if you've been some into Spanish, for example, I'm going to make a quick quiz, a quick quiz. What what do these words uh, are called in Spanish? These two girls are. Mm, yeah, but they are friends. Amigo. Huh? Amigo. Yeah, that's it. You, yeah, yeah, they are amigas. She's saying. <laughs> Hola. And this is our glass of. Ah, I knew. <laughs> I knew you. <laughs> you were going to say that one. I mean, I mean, is, have you made aware of how many languages are out there? I mean, there there are a lot of languages. For example, just in Guatemala, big country, uh, a, a small a small country, we got 22 million languages apart from Spanish, and it's uh, uh, we're one quarter of California's uh, size. 22 languages over there. I mean, there are a lot of people that don't speak English and don't speak Spanish at all. And are we giving them the, the right opportunities? And are we giving them the right tools? I mean, uh, I something I I really appreciate from from Joomla right now is that that Joomla has the multi-language feature because it's very. I mean, it's very important that we make accessible to all the people their their there are things in their in their language i mean the the other challenge oversized websites i mean we we get to put in the in in our in our websites whatever we want and whatever we like and have you tested how uh, how much does the does your site really weigh have you tested your site in a lower connection what happens uh, if you test your site in in those uh, 500 12 uh, kilo kilobits per second. And what happens if you test your site in my 64 kilobits per second that I have when I don't have my, when I, when I get past for my uh, one gigabyte? I mean, I, I'm sure most most of you will, will have to make adjustments for your site to work at, this, at those uh, speeds. And there are a lot of techniques that can be applied, CSS frameworks, Compression, caching, image optimization. I mean, we can do a lot of things to make the, the, our websites ab uh, available to, to people that don't have the resources and the connections. And we'll discuss them in a bit. One very important hosting providers stop filtering our requests. And that's, I, I'm, I mean, that happens a lot. We, we want to see some site and it's either blocked or it's either slower for us. And and that happens a lot. For example, I uh, as, as I have to to do a lot of uh, things in over the internet, I have a, a VPN access that uh, to to one site in in, in USA, and I, I and I've tested that using the same connection I use, uh, the sites from some of the of the hostings are much uh, faster using the VPN than without the VPN. So they they keep blocking my request or they keep. Uh, putting my requests in, in like in a second place, there, and they prefer to have uh, U.S. connections. And why? I mean, I mean, I'm testing it from the same from my same computer in Guatemala, and and I and I don't, ha don't have the same speed if I do that. That happens a lot. That happens a lot. I mean, uh, well, I, I haven't. Uh, well, um, more than that, I I sh I had to to set up some server in Guatemala uh, for our team in Guatemala to to work uh, for Joomla Shack templates because if you use the U.S. based uh, uh, server, I mean, it doesn't work. We can't work uh, fast like that. And and if we use the server in Guatemala, it's like decent. At least it's decent. But the funny thing is, is that if I connect to the VPN, I get that server really fast. 
with my same connection. So it's, I mean, someone's filtering there. Okay, so let's talk about some solutions. What are we doing for all that? And what, what can we do for that? First of all, and I hope you all that make websites are already using HTML5 and CSS3. What can be used right now? I mean, we know that's uh, we know browsers are, are uh, uh, evolving and they are adopting HTML5. But are we still using HTML4? I mean, HTML5 can be used by any browser right now, and even the old browsers there are there are techniques for for making it work. Are we still using Flash? Do we still got the loading pages and loading and loading? I <laughs> I have I have this. Uh, uh, I have this thing when I when I go to into a website and, and I see some animation, I do right click to see if, if they're using Flash. <laughs> I mean, it's like kind of one of my uh, other things I do. You mentioned using HTML5 because actually all the browsers are really not supporting HTML5. True. Is that, is that, is that your actual recommendation? Because there's such a disparity between browsers. You're right. You're right. Actually, um, well, as as it's happening in the in in the U.S. and most of the world, in our countries, uh, Google Chrome is becoming very popular, and I've seen that in in statistics. I have a I have a bunch of customers, and I got their their web analytics, and uh, Google Chrome is becoming very very popular, even even in our countries. And I've been I, I was. I, I I couldn't believe it when I when I when I saw it because uh, I know a lot of people that don't install anything to, to their computers. Especially ju they just get their computers and if it, it has Internet Explorer six, they just use it. <laughs> but uh, more people and more people are getting aware of that, even even in our countries. And yes, you're right. Uh, HTML five doesn't have the same uh, uh, like the same same performance and all that stuff. But, uh, and maybe more than HTML5, CSS3 has a lot of alternatives out there uh, that, that can uh, make, uh, can make f a site faster. For example, you can make animations in CSS3. You can make uh, transparency in CSS3. A lot of stuff that you could, you could only do with images before. Or, oh, or yeah, for example. Yeah, so, so you, you got a lot, of, a lot of resources that you can use using HTML5 and CSS3. And I hope nobody's missing these guys <laughs> anymore. <laughs> we sure don't. No, 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 not that one either. But, but that one, I, I still know people who does. <laughs> yeah, and uh, even Bootstrap and stuff like that have support for IE7, so it's okay. It's like yeah, true. True, they're only developing for IE8, even Joomla check. <laughs> I've I've been I've been following the frameworks uh, lately, and uh, I I've seen they they have they have done s very good improvements. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, I've tested uh, Gantry, and it's doing some very good uh, JavaScript caching and uh, and minifying lately. Uh, our framework in uh, uh, you think also yeah, uh, our framework in, in Joomla uh, right. Uh, for example, the the latest version, uh, well, the the version without Bootstrap, the the, the version we we had was about uh, 1.5 megabytes, I think. That was that was the, the total weight, and the newer ones about uh, 500 kilobytes. So I, I mean, all the companies are doing a uh, lots of effort to, uh, to reducing the size of the of the frameworks, and and the template itself, which is the most important, after all. There are some CSS frameworks as well. Uh, maybe the the most popular are Less and SAS, uh, Less in the PHP world and SAS, especially in the Ruby world. Uh, which uh, what they do is that they pre-process and uh, uh, well, they pre-process the the CSS and they they give us a lot of facilities. You can uh, install uh, a CSS framework both in the server side or in the uh, 
uh, client side, uh, but that, that that depends. But that be, no, that uh, requires some JavaScript to make it work. So that's also good because uh, not only you get uh, better CSS files, but uh, you get uh, you get a lot of facilities. As you can see here, if you define some color like that, you get you you can just just uh, call the color, and then you will get some compiled CSS like this with the color applied everywhere. So the CSS preprocess or the CSS frameworks or preprocessors are are very good. The front end frameworks, and I'll just put Bootstrap here uh, because uh, it's becoming very popular in the in the Joomla world. I mean, there are, there are others out there, and they're good. Uh, but Bootstrap has done a very good effort on uh, uh, documenting and uh, easing things for us, a and especially in in the, in the front end frameworks, I'm I'm talking about the responsive templates, which will optimize the content for mobile, and that's important because uh, much of us uh, use uh, smartphones right now, and it's pretty lame to well, to have the the big page like in in that small screen. So uh, from front end fr frameworks have a lot of, uh, of things to offer to us. And thankfully, Joomla 3 has Bootstrap in there. Uh, the CSS and the JavaScript compressors, and which is uh, something, we, uh, th something you should start doing uh, to compress your site uh, or to compress your files. And there are a lot of, uh, of extensions out there that you can put in your. I I Okay. Like a lot of the frameworks actually have them built in now, and all, most of those don't work for like not to say they work very well. Okay, with with the frameworks. No, with or without like a lot of them. Oh really? Yeah, even separate. Even if you get a, like you start off with a completely barren template and then you mm -hmm. try to implement them because you're going to use a plugin because you're going to use a, oh, okay. a module. Oh, you're right. Like that isn't work for you're you. right. Nightmare. You're right. I ha I have to have to be honest with something. I put this. Uh, because of fishing things, I really haven't tested them. Uh, haven't tested these guys. Uh, what I what I tend to use it because I'm a programmer is I I get the the compressor myself and put it into my template. But that depends on how you're doing things. But the thing is, compressing your your files. That's uh, that's what 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 you should you should start doing. The image of optimization. That's the sprites. Uh, which, has, which are these big images. For example, that's the sprite from, from Google, which is uh, just one image that gets a lot of images. And the purpose of all this is reducing the calls. I mean, uh, you don't get to, to call each image uh, separately, but you get only one big file and call it for, e for every image you want to, to put there. Uh, also, the transparencies, which I've talked about, uh, there are some CSS tree alternatives for creating transparencies and uh, uh, also gradients, which is uh, which is uh, very good right now in, in CSS tree. So you can avoid using images and uh, start optimizing your uh, with uh, some some code. And some other tips, uh, which are well known for uh, for the f for for many developers, especially template developers, which is uh, put the JavaScript at the bottom. Put the CSS CSS styles at the top, and in 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 everything, reduce the HTTP request. I mean, the less requests you uh, you can make to your server is best for the browser. Yes. Wow. So What's it called again? Image. Image? Uh, I M A G and then Optimus O P T I M. It's a image of Tim. Naming guy, naming guy who did this, and it's amazing. Like I've done this as a, on a free side mm -hmm. thing, just for the images. The, the payload of images, which is a graphic intensive site, went from 1.5 megabytes, which is not so surprising, mm -hmm. down to 792k. Wow. Almost half. Oh, thanks. Thanks. That's, that's interesting. That's, yeah, that <laughs> I didn't have that one. Okay. Image of Tim. Yeah. I M A G I M A G O P 
energy of okay optim okay thanks thanks uh, yeah that that's another one i mean i mean uh we're uh, well uh, as a as a template developer, I'm very aware of how much my template is is waiting in for the for the web. Uh, but what but what happens when you create a site is that you get sites uh, that wait what uh, one megabyte, two megabytes, uh, or even more than that. And I get alarmed. I mean, at least me, I get alarmed when when I see a site that waits over one megabyte. I mean, because they shouldn't. They shouldn't. We have a lot of resources that that can keep us from uh, putting a lot of images and waiting our sites too much in there. And because your server matters to site caching, Joomla has this great uh, built-in feature uh, that enables you caching the, the all the requests and the pages um, for uh, your server to be optimized to. You're right. You have to have a very good hosting well, provider. Okay. No, we we won't. <laughs> no, yeah, that's the yeah the, the that's the that's the better recommendation. Don't. <laughs> if you do move. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the last of, of all, uh, use a template framework, uh, which I talked about in my latest, uh, in my other uh, conference. Uh, there are a lot of uh, template frameworks out there. Um, T3, Gantry, Warp, Carver, etc. cetera. Uh, our framework in Joomla Shack, right? I mean, you can, you have a lot of alternatives and most of these frameworks already have uh, compressors and minifiers and stuff that will make your life easier and that will help you to develop better templates and develop better sites. And well, that's uh, for me, but I want to open a bit the discussion because as, as, you, as you were all aware, this was, this was not only like uh, me teaching you how to do, the, do things, but it's, it's a community talk. I mean, and, and thanks for, for your recommendation. I think they're fair enough.